Hi there, this is Jay, welcome to my channel. I'm here at a park near home. Uh, they actually allow us to fly drones here, so I thought I'd come out here in the morning and fly it around. But while I'm out here, I thought I'd talk to you about why I have a folding solar panel and why I think it's quite a necessity if you live out of a small vehicle. There are a lot of advantages of having a folding solar panel, so I thought I'd go over all of them. Now, one of the big problems with living in a small vehicle is once the sun's out, it just gets warm inside the car, and it's, just, it's unavoidable. You need to get in the shade, but if you have a solar panel attached to the rooftop of your car, you're not gonna get any power if you park in the shade. It's just not gonna work out. So it really helps having a, sol a folding solar panel and a maybe I use a 20 foot extension cable. Um, you can go a little further, but you don't want to go too much further because then you start dropping voltage if you put out certain amps. But that way you could park your car in the shade and still run a cable and have a solar panel out in the sun. So you're still generating power and you can do whatever you need inside your car. Another advantage is that when it's cloudy out, you have your rooftop solar power, at least I do. And if you have a folding one, mine is a 100 watt folding panel. So together it's capable of generating 200 watts. So when it's cloudy out, say your top rooftop is only generating 15 to 20 watts, you put out another panel, you get another 20 watts. So even though the weather is not optimal, you could still generate enough power to keep going. Another reason the folding solar panel is nice is the rooftop solar panel is stuck flat. Now the sun is rarely right above you. It's always at an angle. Most of the time it's at an angle. So when you have the folding solar panel, you can take it out, prop it up on something. Oftentimes I actually prop it up on my car or on the wheels or my water bottles, the three liter bottles I have, something heavier. But you can just prop it up and try to point it. And throughout the day, you can actually move it so you kind of optimize how much power you're getting. This is especially important in late fall, early spring, or late winter when the sun is real low. And even at high noon, the sun is still at quite an angle that the rooftop panel is just not gonna be sufficient. It's gonna be working much less than optimal. So having an extra folding panel is great. Oftentimes I'll actually park with my windshield facing the sun at an angle and then I put the solar panel right across the windshield and that's enough to get me a lot of sun. Plus it keeps it off the ground and I know it's not just laying around. The other benefit too is when the solar panel is on across the windshield, it blocks the sun from coming in so it doesn't get the car as hot. Another reason to have a folding solar panel is oftentimes you'll find a camp spot and you'll find one level area and you got your car there. But unfortunately, it's right near a tree and you're not getting any sun. And you know you're not gonna get any sun so folding solar panel and a 20 foot cable, maybe even longer sometimes, and then you can kind of take it out where there is sun. And if you're like situations I've had, you've had to put it there and then as the sun moves, the shadow moves in and you have to move it again. So pretty much all day you're in your car working and then you have to move the solar panel, working, get out, move the solar panel. But that's good anyway, because you should get out and kind of stretch your legs out. So, but it's a constant, it's constant work moving the solar panel around, but that's that's what you have to do when you want to keep getting power. Along the same lines, when you pull into a large campsite area and a lot of spots are full, you don't have your pick. You pick what you can get, and when you find a level spot, will there be sun or not? You never know. So it's nice having a folding solar panel as an option. Also, even on the best of sunny days and you're pulling in 90 watts from your rooftop solar panel, if you've been using a lot of power or if it's been several days that's been cloudy, it's great to have another solar panel to just get out there and take advantage of that bright day and pull in 160 watts of power. That sun isn't gonna last forever, so you might as well top off the battery when you get a chance. Who knows, next day it could be cloudy or rainy. So when it's sunny, and you're not moving anywhere and it's not too windy, it's great to have that second panel to just pull in as much power as you can when you have the chance. Another thing I've done several times is when I go to say a coffee shop to go work inside for several hours, 
I'll park my car somewhere I could see it from the inside and I'll actually put the solar panel across the windshield as well and then just let that generate extra power while I'm inside working. I generally do not put the solar panel on the windshield or on the top of the car if I know I can't watch it because if the winds pick up it'll blow it off or someone could just come by and grab it and steal it. It'd be pretty easy. Another thing you could do with the solar panel besides just putting it across the windshield is I like to just kind of just drape it over where the sunroof is in front of the car. Uh, there's no good advantage if I want the sun coming in through the windshield because I want it to kind of dry out the car. I just put the sunroof on the top, let the sun come in everywhere, and then I still generate power while I'm still not moving and I'm still getting sun coming in through the windows. Now here is I think the most important thing you should know about the folding solar panel. The one I have, it's, it's semi-rigid. It's got some plastic backing. It folds in half. When you fold it together, it's pretty hard. Now, when you lay it out, it's still pretty rigid as well. The problem is, once you lay it out and it sits in the sun for a long time, the heat makes the plastic really weak and you can see it start kind of warping around what you prop up. The problem also is, Oftentimes, I want to just pick it up and lift it and then move it or tilt it some more. So you want to do that to move it to, to follow the sun. Um, but I will admit, I didn't know about this before, but I read an article later. Is when I picked it up, I've actually heard little cracking sounds like... <sighs> and I think it was because the plastic backing was so weak. When I lifted it up from the top, the leverage there just kind of it broke the solar panels along the top the plastic just lost its rigidity from the heat so if you get one of these folding panels I highly recommend never picking it up like that just kind of lift it up so it's vertical grab it and then move it and then lay it down gently especially if it's been laying in the sun for a while because it could damage your panel I don't have a record of what may have happened to my panel but I can say that in the beginning of my trip last year, the folding panel used to generate 80, 90 watts sometimes. But since the whole summer, it's been generating at max, super clear day, sun hitting it perfectly perpendicular, 60 watts max. So I'm pretty sure I damaged some of the panels along the sides. So that's a big thing. Do not try to bend it. I have read that if you bend it, say this is the solar panel side, bend it this way, but do not ever bend it away. I would suggest don't bend it at all. Try your best to not bend it or apply too much force in any way that could potentially cause it. The, the solar panels inside to get damaged. The panel that I bought was $180 and I see right now it's a newer version. It's $190 and I see it's got its own support legs, which is great. Because I'm always having to find random things to prop it up. But be careful with it because it, it is pricey and it is fragile. Once it's been sitting in the sun, it is, it is definitely fragile. So be careful. Now on the inside of my car, I knew I wanted a second solar panel. So I used a Renegade uh, Y adapter with the MC4 connectors. That way I can connect two solar panels coming in and have one output going to the charge controller. I highly recommend that. For this year, I'm considering going with a 3Y, I guess not a Y, a W adapter, but that way I can have the rooftop, the folding, which is actually only producing 60 watts max. And I was going to buy a 50 watt panel that I can kind of prop up against the front windshield. I have been uh, playing around and it seems like, and I've been reading a lot online as well, and I thought, uh, UV blocking properties of windshields would make the solar panels much less efficient but it seems like it only blocks a small portion of what solar panels use to produce power so it's still going to run really well. So altogether I'm going to have 250 watts although my folding panel has been damaged enough where it's 40 off 210 watts of potential power on a perfectly sunny day. My charge controller is 20 amps, so that should be sufficient to manage all that power. Before you add your folding solar panel to your system, you need to be aware of what your charge controller 
or what your solar generator that you use can accept as input. You don't want to be pushing in 200 watts of input when it can't handle that capacity. You may damage it or at best case scenario you'll have to just replace a fuse or throw it through a circuit breaker. But definitely look at the input of your charge controller again or your solar generator. That is probably the most important thing before you even decide on getting another solar panel is doing that. Oftentimes too I actually took my folding panel and I plugged it in and I just laid it flat on the ground on the grass wherever. It may not have been perfectly optimal but the sun was high enough that it was good enough. Now the problem with that is it hasn't happened to me but the back of the folding solar panel has the one I use anyway has a little pocket where you put the cables and stuff. Always check that pocket before putting it in the car. Use a flashlight something. I always keep a flashlight on my car keys so that's always handy. Have something and just check the pockets because the last thing you want is to put the solar panel in your car and start driving and have a, a rattlesnake or a scorpion or a tarantula crawl out of there and surprise you or have it be in your car and wake you sometime in the night. So when you pick it up, open that little basket or if it has one, anything, just kind of check it over. Make sure you don't have weird things crawling on it or living inside it before you put it in your car. When not in use, I like to just place the solar panel right next to the passenger side door. It fits in there really well. The folding ones are very compact, so it fits there well. I consider getting the rigid folding ones, but they're still too thick that it would take up a lot of room and it wouldn't fit in the door. But the folding panel I found fits there perfectly, so I'm going to continue my journeys with that there. Now the extension cable that I use is from Windy Nation. When I built out my car, I like to create my own MC4 cables, but the cables I had were kind of rigid and I wanted something more pliable that's easier to control, especially if you're constantly maneuvering it under the car, around the wheels. And the Windy Nation one I got, I hope they don't change the type of plastic they use, but it was really soft, bent easily. It didn't stick in whatever formation you had it. So I roll it up and roll it out and it worked out really well and currently I'm considering getting a 25 foot cable. The 20 foot was just a little short sometimes for me. One thing with these MC4 connectors without the proper tool sometimes the clips will actually be impossible to take off. So as you can see here I actually tore off the notch because I had broken my tool actually one time. Normally you would use this part to press down on it and get it out, but because I broke the tool and I had no way to get to them, I just used some multi-tools and ripped off the edges. The only thing this breaks really is when you pull on the cord now from a connection, it pops right out. But other than that, it doesn't impede any of the function. So remember, before you do any solar planning, you have to remember that simple rule, watts equals voltage times amps. So watts equals voltage times amps. That goes in all over the place. So that's why when I say 200 watts, assuming it's 12 to 14 volts, it can be this many amps. And that's the sort of charge controller that you're gonna need. If you are going to set up your own solar system and you're kind of piecing it together, you should live off that formula. But, well, not really, but you know, it's pretty important. So keep that in mind when you do all your math and do your math as well. So that's basically all my advice about using a folding solar panel and why I prefer to have one and will continue to use one. I guess my last bit of advice, I haven't done this yet, but I see the potential for it happening someday is always put it away before you drive away. I think someday I'm going to do it. I'm pretty sure I am. Um, especially if you don't see it, it's, it's entirely possible. So remember, put that solar panel away before you drive away. All right. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And I will talk to you later. Bye now. Thanks. Bye.